Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for December 11, 2018. I'm getting towards the end of the year. I'm excited about closing out the year strong. I've been teaching all year long about raising your expectation, and I really want us to continue to have an expectation for an amazing closeout to this amazing year, right? So I've been teaching a series entitled Standing on a Word from God, and you have to stand on a word from God for the long haul until it comes to pass in your life. First, we looked at the life of Abraham. Now we're looking at the life of David. This is part 67 of the overall series, part 39 of the life of David. And the title of today's message is the road to your destiny. Look at me for a minute. Listen, God destined you from the foundations of the world. And there's a, there's a predetermined destination that God wants you to arrive at. And there's a predetermined path for you to get there, for you to get to your purpose. I'm talking about the road to your destiny. So for today, because I'm trying to wrap up this series, I'm going to summarize a bunch of stuff. Oh man, it really kind of hurt my heart to have to skip over all this stuff. I could be teaching on David for months, but the Lord told me I need to teach on something else in January. So let me wrap this up. I'm going to summarize 1 Samuel chapter 30 today, all the way to 2 Samuel chapter 2. So uh, yesterday, We saw how David and his men lost everything at Ziklag. Remember, they got back to Ziklag. They had been walking for six days. They just wanted a hot meal. They wanted a hug from their wives. They wanted to play with their kids. Their wives were gone. Their kids were gone. They were taken as slaves. Their whole town was burnt down. They lost everything. And and then David's men turned on him and they wanted to kill him. David had nothing and no one else. David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. He asked God, Lord, what shall I do? Shall I pursue? And and the Lord said, yes, you go and you pursue and you overtake and you shall recover all. And so David took 600 of his men and they went and they pursued and they overtook and they recovered all. Glory to God. So let me fast forward now to 2 Samuel. And so uh, um, in the the chapters that I'm skipping over, I do want to just highlight one thing. So in this time, while David is still waiting on the, the promise of God to be the king of Israel and years and years have gone by over 10 years by this point. During this time, uh, in these chapters that I'm skipping over, David actually had an opportunity to kill Saul. Oh, man, he could have sped up the process. He had an opportunity to kill Saul, even though Saul was trying to kill him. Watch this. David refused to do it. David refused to put his hands on Saul. David did not want to accept the right thing, but do it the wrong way. You know why? Because if you are pursuing, this is a great lesson for us that are waiting on a promise from God. This is a great lesson for us that are waiting on God to do what he said he was going to do in our lives. This is a great lesson for us. You don't have to go pursue it the wrong way. If you try to get the right thing, but you do it the wrong way, then it becomes the wrong thing. See, you're you're going to damage your destiny by trying to pursue it the wrong way. Don't do it that way. He could have killed Saul twice and he refused to do it one time. He even snuck up on him while Saul was sleeping and cut a little piece of his garment, right? Just to bring it back as proof, like, dude, I could have killed you, but he didn't do it. He could have killed him twice. He refused to do it because he he refused to go after the right thing the wrong way. And we should all learn that lesson. By the end of 1 Samuel, Saul and his three sons were killed in a battle with the Philistines. And in 2 Samuel chapter 1, David learned of the death. And when David learned of this, he mourned. Even though Saul was trying to kill him for years, he mourned. Even though Saul was his enemy and had him rated as the you know, uh, uh, enemy number one against the nation of Israel, it didn't matter. Saul, main, I mean, uh, David maintained his integrity and David mourned. And after the mourning, then David inquired of the Lord. He was like, well, what do I do now? Because now he's in position to become the king of Israel, right? And there are 12 tribes in Israel. And so he was like, okay, he has to go somewhere, one of the 12 tribes, in order, you know, for the process to start. He was like, well, where where do I go? And so he inquired of the Lord concerning where where he should go. And and, uh, what I really like about this, too, is that while he's going to go and ask God what to do, the Bible says that he actually had a priest with him. So David had a priest with him, but he didn't go to the priest. He went to God. He went to God directly and said, Lord, what should I do? And he asked the Lord, should I move back to one of the towns of Judah? He was asking because um, he was from Judah. Now, Saul was from Benjamin, right? But David was from Judah. And so he's asking, like in his heart, he just knew that it was kind of right for him to go home. So he said, Lord, shall I go home? 
Shall I go to one of the towns of Judah? And I believe it was in his heart to ask the question because the Lord said, yes. The Lord said, okay, go. And the Lord even told him which town to go to. The Lord said, I want you to go back to Judah. Actually, go to Hebron. And so David did exactly what the Lord told him to do. And so he went and he settled with his family in the town of Hebron in the tribe of Judah. And the Bible says, once he got in position, this is what happens when you get in position. Once he got in position, then the men of Judah came out, the Bible says, to David and anointed him to be the king over the people of Judah. Now, David was 30 years old when this happened. He was 17 years old when, when Samuel started the process and anointed him to be the king, right? But here, he's not the king of Judah, I mean, the king of Israel yet. He's just the king of Judah. So he's the king of one of the 12 tribes. Uh, but at least the process is getting started. It took 13 years for him to get to this point, And he was walking down the road to his destiny. So what does this mean to you today? Because you're like, Rick, this is a good story. But man, I got a lot of stuff on my calendar. I got a lot, a lot of stuff I got to do today. Okay, fine. I got you. I got you. I'm going to give you something. I have three things to share with you on this morning that I believe are going to be a blessing to you as it relates to David and as it relates to you. You ready? Three things. Number one, there is a path to your purpose. Just like, you know, David had to walk down his path, down the road to his destiny. There's a path. The writer of Hebrews told us in Hebrews 12 and 1 that we as believers are to run with patience. The word patience is also translated endurance. So we ought to run with patience or endurance the, the race that God has set before us. There is a set race that God has set before us. Not only do I believe, well, from the word of God, that we have a God-ordained purpose, but I believe also that there is a God-ordained path to that purpose. So David was walking down his path. You would think now, going all the way back to when David was 17, David went from obscurity, a nobody, to national hero overnight. He married the king's daughter. He moved into the royal palace. He had people singing his name. You would have thought he had it all. You would have thought, oh man, yep, he's about to be the king because Samuel anointed him. No, no, it's not that easy. The path to your purpose, God never promised the path to your purpose to be a perpetual picnic. No, it's not that easy. So yes, before you knew it, King Saul was throwing javelins at David. Before you knew it, David was a fugitive. Before you knew it, David was on the run. Before you knew it, David was in a cave not knowing what to do because he was walking down the road to his destiny. Now, the path wasn't easy. David made his fair share of mistakes. But whenever David got in position, like he did here and he, and he went to Judah, whenever God, David got in position, like when he moved to Hebron, there was a blessing waiting for him in that place. And it's the same thing with you. Listen, look at me for a minute. You have a God ordained path to your purpose. Now, there's a purpose waiting for you, right? And then there's a God ordained path and there's things that you have to do along the way. Now, there will be times, the Bible says, all we like sheep go astray. I mean, so there will be times where you kind of get off calibration, where you get off kilter. And if you're led of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to make some course corrections. Oh, no, 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 no. You went out too far this way, son. Come on back. You went out too far that way, daughter. Come on back. And, and the Holy Spirit will, will lead you to make some course corrections. And as you do, as you get back in position, you will realize that there's a blessing waiting for you in that place. You, it, it's not forced. You don't have to force the blessing. The blessing is already there. You just have to be in position. The grace will flow when you're in position. Divine things, powerful things happen when you make a divine alignment with your divine assignment, right? When you make a human alignment with your divine assignment, then the blessing is able to flow. And then little by little, you will arrive at your overall destination and God's overall destination for your life. And the goal is to get there before you die, right? Number two, there's a, pa a pace to your purpose. Just like a, there's a path to your purpose, well, there's also a pace. By 2 Samuel chapter 2, it had been 13 years since Saul showed up at Jesse's house. 13 years. I mean, that's not easy. And watch this. Even after 13 years, he still wasn't the king of Israel. He was just the king of Judah. And actually, it would take another seven years, seven and a half years to be exact, for him to be the king of Israel. So humanly speaking, you would think that it was taking too long. Come on, God. I mean, are you kidding me? God anointed David when he was 17 years old. He was a teenager. And then it took 13 years. He was 30 years old when he became the king of Judah. 
and another seven years for him to become the king of Israel. So it took 20 years in all, right? And 20 years for us, oh my gosh, that seems like a lifetime for something to come to pass. But here's the truth. The truth is, the Bible says a thousand years are like one day to God. 20 years is like a blink of an eye to God. So as it relates to God, he's not moved. Time is not an issue for him. If he said it, it has to come to pass. But we as humans, I know it's easy. It's easy for us to get impatient, short-sighted, restless, and anxious, stressed out because it hasn't happened yet. My message to you this morning is, is as believers, faith has a rest component to it. You can't be in faith and worry. So the highest form of faith is rest. We must learn how to enter into God's rest. So slow down, run your race, run it at your pace, and know that there's a blessing waiting for you at each level, each stage, and each season. And also remember this, you can't go to the next season until you maximize this one. All right, number three and finally, last thing I share with you on this morning, there's a grace for your purpose. So there's a path to your purpose, there's a pace for your purpose, there's a grace for your purpose. If someone were to meet David, while he was reigning as the king of Israel, right? So it's been over, over 20 years. So let's say someone meets David after he's 38 years old and he's already the king of Israel. And they would say, wow, man, it would be great to be that guy. He's so lucky. <laughs> and they had no idea what he had been through. They would be making this statement without having an inkling of a thought of what he had to go through to get to what he got. See, people envy the glory, but they don't know the story. David went through a bunch to be able to fulfill his purpose. And actually, the truth be told, most, of, most people, most of us couldn't do it. We would have been broken to attempt to do what David did, but David had the grace for it. And here's my point. David had the grace for his purpose. I have the grace for my purpose, and you have the grace for yours. Whatever God has called you to do, he's already graced you to do. He's already equipped you to do it. God, his instruction is always equal to his injection. If he's telling you to do it, it's because God, his, he's already graced you to do it. He, you already have it on the inside of you. That's why you can't concern yourself with other people because they have their own race and they have their own grace and they have to run it at their own pace. You just run the race that is set before you, knowing that whatever God called you to do, he expects you to do. And whatever he expects you to do, he equips you to do. In this season, you have a destiny and God expects you to run down the road to your destiny, empowered by his grace. Amen? And hold on until it comes to pass. Let's close this message out now with a declaration of faith. I want you to prophesy. Speak this over your life. Say this. Say, Father, thank you for making plans for me before the world began. Before my mother met my father, you established my purpose, and you also prepared a path for me to get there. I declare that I shall run the race that you have set before me with patience and endurance. I will journey down the road to my destiny, determined to make the most of every level, stage, and season. Not only do I have an ordained path, but I also have an ordained pace at which I'm supposed to run my race. So I don't concern myself with other people because they have their own race and they're running at their own pace. Someone else's pace may be too slow for me. So it will frustrate me or it may be too fast for me. So if I try to keep up with them, I may get burnt out. I could even kill myself trying to keep up with someone else. I have a tailor made assignment from you and I declare that I will follow it. I follow my path at my pace with your grace. I am graced to overcome every obstacle to accept every success, and to maximize every season on the road to my destiny. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. You'll get a copy of my notes for free in an email. Sign up at todaysword.org. Click on the subscribe button. As you head into this day, just know that there's a road to your destiny and you have to run it. You have to run it with the grace that's already on you to do it. Don't concern yourself with other people. You just run your race at your pace with God's grace. Do me a favor. Share this message on your social media before you leave this screen. God bless you.